2024 seems to be an exciting and busy year for Bethesda as a whole. They have so much to look forward to while also having a lot to work on and release. Many things ranging from Starfield updates, the DLC Shattered Space, the Fallout TV series, Fallout 4 with the next gen update, and the very first map expansion for Fallout 76. So if you're a Fallout fan, there's a lot for you to possibly love with all of that. Now it's no secret that I'm not really a fan of Fallout 76, but it's good to see that they're still trying to work on that game and make it better, even if it doesn't appeal to me. And with all of this going on, there's a discussion that really needs to be made regarding Bethesda, not necessarily the schedule. I'll touch up on all these details in another video and provide my thoughts on that, but I want to talk more about the way that Bethesda seems to have lost their identity. And what I mean by that is the way that they make their games with recent releases such as Starfield, Fallout 76, and Fallout 4. Fallout 4, of course, not being as bad, but what I would call the start of the loss of their identity with their video games. I should also note, I've played many releases from Bethesda like Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout 3, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Starfield, and even their mobile games. I played so many of these games growing up and I still continue to play them to this day. They truly are special games to not only me, but to many people. Because if you compare the recent release of Starfield to any of their other previous games, to me it's like it lacks soul to some degree. I'll explain why I feel like that later on in the video when I do discuss Starfield. But my point is, Bethesda games used to mean a lot when they release. I enjoyed Starfield, but there are issues that we will apparently see resolved in 2024. But being brutally honest, there are things that should have been in place or fixed before the release of the game. Anyway, I'll start with Fallout 76 for this video since this is an easy one. I do want to say though, I'm not hounding Bethesda for attempting to make different games or even an online game for that matter. But it's just a thing that continues to creep into my mind when I play their recent releases. So Fallout 76 is quite clearly an online video game, very different than their usual game design with single player RPGs, do your own thing, go where you want for the theme and mentality for the players. I feel like Fallout 76 was a game that helped Bethesda get out of their comfort zone and develop something they've never developed before. The downfall about that is they took away key components that truly make a Bethesda game a Bethesda game. The feeling of immersion, environmental storytelling, and much more was sacrificed for the sake of just having a multiplayer Fallout game. I have tried so many times to play Fallout 76 because I've always wanted to like it, but I've never been able to get fully into it. Even after the Wastelanders updates, the Brotherhood of Steel updates, it just doesn't do it for me. And for me personally, there was just a lot of things that went wrong with it, but I'm not making a video to discuss what was wrong with Fallout 76, more so giving examples of my point. Moving on to Fallout 4, it was a game that had the internet going crazy. The announcement at E3 from Bethesda in 2015 is one that I will never forget. Announcing it and having it released within the same year, with a small window, might I add, not to mention the shadow drop of Fallout Shelter as well. Well, that was such an insane time to be a Fallout fan. I enjoyed Fallout 4 personally. It was a game that I've put countless hours into and I still do to this day. But I think this is where we see more of the problems that are coming from Bethesda. Obviously not on the scale of Starfield, but more in line with Preston Garvey's settlements, questing from a couple of the Brotherhood of Steel characters, and more. I could be wrong, but these types of quests actually began in Skyrim with the Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild questing. But I'm using Fallout 4 as more of an example because I feel like they take more of a tonal shift in Fallout 4 as opposed to Skyrim, because they show up more and have a strong sense of relying on this type of content to give quests to the players. Not to mention, a lot of the quests in Fallout 4 begin using fetch quests to occupy a lot of their side content. But just to go on record, there were some good things to come out of Fallout 4 for me. It was the layered armor, the power armor retcon, I really liked the way that they completely changed the power armor, and the weapon customizations. But the overall experience started to have that feeling of being watered down for a Bethesda game. Now finally, Starfield. This is the game similar to Fallout 76 where Bethesda went out of their comfort zone to develop something completely different than what they did in the past. Creating a huge playground for players but at the cost of using technology to generate a massive amount of planets and placing repeating areas on those planets. This isn't the Bethesda that I knew growing up or even the Bethesda I knew before Fallout 76. It's been claimed that they've used random generation to put together the worlds that they create so that's really nothing new. However, when you're using it to nearly make the game and leave the handcrafted content aside for the sake of more isn't what they should be about. Oblivion is a good example of the world being obviously generated, but Bethesda poured so much into the open world of that game and it was huge. Not saying that Starfield isn't or wasn't huge, because it is a massive game, but something I've seen people call it on the internet is as wide as an ocean, but as deep as a puddle. I think that would accurately sum up some parts of Starfield. There are some good parts of course, but there are obviously some bad. The only thing that does make me a little nervous 
nervous is that Bethesda views Starfield as a success, considering it had passed 10 million players. I just hope this isn't something that Bethesda views as a positive thing to decide to continue this type of identity or game design for their future games. Not taking away the success that this game has had, but I'm just explaining why I feel the way that I do. It all keeps coming back full circle to Bethesda. They keep trying something different in their last two releases, for example, that makes me feel like they haven't worked on something that truly feels like them. I think that's been the main problem. Who knows how the Elder Scrolls 6 will be when it's released. It will clearly be a long wait before we hear or see anything Elder Scrolls 6 related, but they have to find their identity again. One of their main points was that they were going back to the roots with Starfield. But the more that I think about it, there's no way that they can do that because Starfield isn't something they've created before. But the Elder Scrolls is something they're used to and something that the fans are used to. They need to seriously go back to their roots, this time with the Elder Scrolls 6, and the way that they design their games and bring back what makes their game so special. Considering that Morrowind was their saving grace back in the day when they struggled financially, hopefully the Elder Scrolls 6 will be the same saving grace for their reputation. They shouldn't have to worry about the money issue since they're being backed by Microsoft now, but something has to give. Something has to be improved and it definitely should have started with Starfield. They have a lot on their plate with Starfield in 2024. Hopefully Bethesda sticks to their guns and actually finds a way to improve on Starfield with all of these updates they've promised us in the coming future. My closing remarks for this video is that Bethesda should focus more on creating content that is handcrafted, single player, stay away from those fetch quests, create stories that matter, and utilize their efficient environmental storytelling that we all know and love from them. Just because you can make a map massive open world and just rely on random generation doesn't mean you should. Sure, creating the husk or the outline for the open world, that's fine. They've proven they're super capable of doing so with previous releases, but please add the soul back to your worlds. When you're revisiting the same area over 10 times in the same game on different planets, it, it doesn't work. I think what set previous Bethesda games apart from their past to their present releases is it feels like they were trying too hard to do what other developers or companies were doing with their IPs, like the Battle Royale that was in Fallout 76. I know they have since removed that game mode, but it shouldn't have been in the game to begin with because it just didn't feel like Fallout. And just claiming they have over 1 thousand planets in Starfield. They should quit trying to go big and copy other ideas. I just don't think it works for them. They have a unique style of game design with all the previously stated details that works well with their video games. And to me, it doesn't feel forced or rushed even. Now, I'm not claiming that I know anything about game design or creating a video game in general. There are just things that I've noticed that kept coming to me while playing Starfield, Fallout 76, and some parts of Fallout 4. I just know that Bethesda can do better and that's all I want. I will be very upset and not only me, but many people are are going to be very upset as well. Imagine how people will feel if Bethesda waters down the experience for the Elder Scrolls 6. It will be chaos. But that will be it for this video. I know it has been a little bit since I've uploaded. I was actually in the midst of building a PC that has been working very, very well while also spending time with family during the holidays. So now that everything is starting to settle down, I'll be posting more videos frequently and consistently. So stay tuned for those. And if you're new here and enjoyed this content, consider subscribing to the channel. I would also love to hear everyone's thoughts on this video as well so be sure to put them down below and thank you all for watching and i will see you guys in the next video